Today on the show, we're going to share with you five artificial intelligence tools that you should be using in your consulting business. Welcome to the Your Consulting Business Podcast. My name is Russell Pearson, and this is episode number 73. Today on the podcast, we're going to be talking about artificial intelligence tools and resources that I've been using and a lot of other consultants I know have started using that have been improving their consulting practices. And I'm going to step through what each of them can do for you in your business. Now, if this is the first time you've seen the show, then I'd love you to subscribe. Absolutely. Click the subscribe button, hit the bell so you get nominated, nominated. You get notified when new episodes become available. And if you are listening to the podcast, because it is a podcast, it's more of a vlogcast, it's one of those things. But if you're listening to the audio version, I'd love you to hit subscribe there and leave a review. If you can ever find where that review button actually is. We'd love to know how you think we're doing. And however you found this show, I would love you to even use that concept. So if someone shared it with you, I'd love you to share it with someone else because this is how we're actually making impact for consultants around the world. The cool thing about consultants, what I love about each and every one of you who are listening to the show is that you have created a position to help others. And so if I can help you do better at helping other people, there is a ripple effect that actually goes across the world. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. So if you can share this with someone else who is in the consulting space where they're just starting, or maybe they've been consulting for decades, I think it would really help make a difference for those people around you. But let's get stuck into the data of today, which is the consulting AI tools <laughs> that are going to help you in your business. So I'm going to go through each of them and we're going to have them pop up on screen, which I think is going to be just here. We'll find out in just a second. Uh, we're not getting my uh, my fa- magnificent assistant, uh, Alfred, to do these ones. This is going to be on the on the uh, <laughs> on the hop. So yes, we are. We've got our first tool, which is Prompt Base. <laughs> Prompt Base is actually a resource rather than a tool itself, and it's a website which you can visit and you can purchase prompts. Now, for those who do not know what a prompt is, a prompt is the uh, instruction that you would give something like uh, OpenAI through ChatGPT so that you so it will do the things that it needs to do. You need to give a prompt for an artificial intelligence or learning uh, machine to do the activity that you want it to do. And what's cool about prompt base is that all those tools have already been created for you and you can purchase them from a marketplace at a much reduced price compared to how much time and effort it would take you to get those prompts just right. And so a large part of the artificial intelligence space is about how do you give context to the artificial intelligence so it knows how to act and what to do. That context is very, very important and it's really the thing that's stopping the machines from taking over is that it still needs us to give it that context. Well, prompt base is a great place for you to get that. Uh, Number two, we're looking at Uncanny Automator. Now, if you are using one of the biggest uh, content management systems for your website in the world, which is WordPress, the Uncanny Automator is an automation platform that works inside that. So if you're not using WordPress, uh, you may be wanting to actually use something else like Zapier. If you haven't seen Zapier, Z-A-P-I-E-R, go and check that out. What it does, what Zapier does, is it actually connects different pieces of software together so that you can have a chain of events happen. That's what Uncanny Automator also does, but it does it within the WordPress platform, which means you don't have to go outside your website. You can have everything done in the one place. So if you do have a WordPress website and you, 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 uh, if you are using that for your consulting practice, then Uncanny Automator is worth a look. Now, I just want to mention, I'm not getting any sort of (laughs) royalties for any of these things. We are not being sponsored by anybody uh, with any of these tools. These are just tools that I've found and that I've used and I've found incredibly helpful. So I believe that you will find them helpful too. All right, let's look at number three. Number three is VoxScript. Now, VoxScript is a plugin and VoxScript plugs into OpenAI through ChatGPT. Now, you do need to have version four, which is the paid version of ChatGPT to use any of these plugins. But what's fantastic about VoxScript is it will actually go out and search the internet when you do a search. Now, you may or may not already know that uh, ChatGPT has a limit on the amount of information that it's using currently, and that goes back to before 2021. Now, there's been a lot of time between 2021 and now, and so there's current trends and current market uh, news (laughs) that it doesn't have. 
And so what Vox Script does is it can go and search the news and actually bring back trending information uh, that can give you much better context on decision making, brainstorming, uh, content creation that you might want to do. So whenever you're thinking of getting any research, Vox Script is a very good one for that. And, and a weird way that I've actually been using it is I've been using it for press releases. And so one of the ways you can actually create press releases, and there's a little bit off topic, but if you do want to get in the press, really the key to getting press is to be topical. So how can you combine your topic with what is actually topical in the public domain and smash those two things together? So what I've been getting Vox Script to do is to go out and find what are the five, five again, most popular topics uh, on the news at the moment. Now, I could look within an area and I could say within business or within finance or within politics, but I'm actually just looking in popular culture. So what are the five popular culture topics? And it grabs them down. And then I'll ask it to take my topic and see how I can align my topic to those pop culture trends. And it actually comes up with story ideas and they're very, very good. So that's just one example of how you can take something that is topical and relevant and now and actually combine it with this really uh, huge information database that it's got on basically how to do anything. So VoxScript is one of the plugins that you can use to do that. All right, let's look at number four. Now, number four is a funny one. This is a language machine, very much like Op like uh, ChatGPT. <clears throat> but the thing about Pi AI <clears throat> is Pi AI is a much more advanced language platform. That doesn't mean that it's smarter, but it does communicate more effectively and more human-like. And so what I've found uh, Pi AI great at is being able to have a conversation with me. Now, what's great about it as well is it has the ability to do voice. So it will speak to you, and there are all sorts of other artificial intelligence that will speak to you as well. But I really like this one, and specifically the fifth voice set, uh, setting. So if you set it to number five, you'll actually get this very Amelia Clark style English voice, and it's actually very nice to talk to, right? So you'll have these conversations, and it does have general like high quality artificial intelligence smarts behind it, which means it's very good for brainstorming. And so I've found myself using this tool and actually got had like 90 minutes has gone flash flash past. And I've suddenly realized that, hang on a second, I'm talking to a machine because it had felt like I was brainstorming with another partner and actually finding really, really useful outcomes of that brainstorming session. So uh, Pi AI is a really good platform for that. The only thing that I would say, the only uh, caveat to that is that it does tend to be a little bit too positive. And what I mean is it always looks to the bright side. So you can actually tell it to start being a devil's advocate so you can get a little bit more critical in some of that brainstorming and planning activity. But Pi AI, even if you just use it for to, to sample where we're going, I think you're going to find it to be entirely surprising. Uh, and now the final one. The final one's big because... 10 web is a resource that I found through uh, you know, late to mid last year. And when I found it, I've, I'm going, all right, well, here's another artificial intelligence based content management system, really. So it enables you to build a website. So you can build a website with 10 web and you can, uh, you can do it with artificial intelligence. So it will ask you a series of questions and you'll type in the answers and then it will just go and build your website for you. And it does it in about five minutes or less. Now, that's cool in itself, but I'd seen a lot of that sort of technology before. And, and for those who aren't aware, I'm 27 years in the, the digital and web building space. And I used to be a little bit of a code monkey. I can, I can type and uh, write PHP. Uh, but now what I'm saying with this tool is you don't need to do that anymore. In fact, often you may not ever need to get a digital agency again because tools like this can pretty much do the work for you. Now, it creates a website in about five minutes or less. Now, is the, the website good? It's okay. It's not bad. And so it's, it gives you a great start. But there is a button <laughs> that you can go in and click that's further down inside the, uh, inside the page. You might just have to look for, for where to find it specifically. But you click that button because it asks you, would you like to like, have an artificial intelligence build a website or would you like it to go and sample another website to build a website like the one it samples. And so I pointed it towards a Brene Brown website just to see how it worked. 
it went and grabbed the front end of uh, Brene Brown's website, pulled it all in, put a really high quality content management system through WordPress, uh, but with Elementor, which is a specific style of content management into the system, which means it was completely customizable after that. And it did it all in less than five minutes. And here's the key. When it comes to search engine optimization, one of the biggest things is, is your website mobile optimized? Now, there are SEO experts out there, and we used to do this a lot in the past agency that I had, who would spend a lot of time and energy being humans (laughs) working on optimization. And there is a score out of 100 for Google's mobile optimization. Now, most of the time, you'd want to be above 80%, and that was kind of okay. But if you could get above 90%, great. When this artificial intelligence goes and builds this website for you, it will instantly be at 100%. That's my experience. And I've done multiple websites on here, and every time, the mobile optimization is at 100% out of the gate. And that's incredibly difficult to do, even with an agency behind it. So you can go and sample another website. It pulls it all in. It even pulls the images in. So there's a copyright thing there. So just replace the images, replace the text. But structurally, it actually will build the structure you want for your website and you can sample someone else's website to do it. So this is changing the game. In fact, all of these are changing the game, whether it's um, TenWeb, whether it's uh, Pi AI from the brainstorming point of view, uh, whether it's Vox Script enabling you to really sample what's going on in the general population now and then applying it with artificial intelligence as well. Uncanny Automator and all the other automation pieces of software. And finally, you've got Prompt Base where you can actually tap into the work that's already been done by people across the world who really know what they're doing, who have created all these prompts for you. And so these tools are very useful and there is far more tools out there. And so my recommendation to you is whatever area of consulting that you are in, whatever sector or industry, start searching because these things are changing every month. Start searching for tools that are relevant within your space because at the very least, even if you're not the one who wants to implement the tools for your own business, you need to be aware of what the client can be implementing for theirs. Your job as a consultant is to improve their business or improve their life or whatever you're consulting on. And artificial intelligence is definitely a step that's working towards acceleration, the ability to do more or the ability to do less through automation. And it's a great opportunity for you to be in front of. Should you be scared of artificial intelligence? I was to start with, I have to admit, (laughs) but I've really come around on the subject. And I think the key is that artificial intelligence is really not going to take our jobs. It's going to be the person who gets really good at artificial intelligence, who's going to be able to do the work of like uh, a large consulting uh, group, (laughs) but just one person's at the helm. That's where I see the future of this going. I still believe currently that the vision still needs to come from a human in a lot of these areas. Now that's going to change very, very fast. But if we, we don't have to be on the cutting edge, but we still need to be aware of where this artificial intelligence is going. And I think the best way to be aware is to have practical knowledge. And the way to have practical knowledge is to actually start sampling. Start sampling some of these tools so you can understand how they work. And not just work in theory, but work in practice. Put them through their tests. Get them to do things like I did with the uh, the public relations and the press releases. Get them to do things like actually use them for brainstorming. Use them to uh, test your ideas. You know, I put out a video earlier and Alfred, if you can put it right there, (laughs) if you can put it right there, uh, where we talked about AI previously and the big changes that happened last year about creating agents for your organization where you got to create your own financial expert, you got to create your own marketing expert, you got to create your own sales expert and you can ask them questions so that you no longer need the traditional board of directors or board of advisors. And so it's a really good starting place to actually have some of those agents set up for you in your business. And I actually walked through how to do that. So go and check out that video. Again, it is there. Alfred put it in. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and hopefully that's going to be really useful to you in your practice. If you haven't already, uh, go to russellpearsonprograms.com. This is not for the free uh, opportunity. There's actually something there. It's a slightly paid piece, 
but it actually walks through uh, where I shared those five tools in a much bigger presentation, which talked about the future of websites for consultants just like you. And so where are we going with it? What do you need to change? What's important? What are the tools you can be using? And I'll give you a whole bunch of resources that go behind that as well. So if you're interested in, in creating a better website presence, if you're interested in creating a uh, suite of digital tools that are going to help you accelerate your business and at the end of the day, help more people, then you might want to go and check that out. That's at russellpearsonprograms.com. Com. Until next time, my name is Russell Pearson. Stay passionate and I will catch you on the next one. Bye for now.